Hello you guys, this is Fun Automotive and in this video we're going to be replacing the spark plugs and getting this bad boy to run nice and smooth and subtle because it's got this bad, not too bad but still it's got a kind of a bad vibration to it. It goes even and then it wants to drop RPM, go a little rough and then even again and uh, even whenever it does stay at a steady idle it still wants to just run rough so today we're going to be replacing the spark plugs on this uh bad boy right here this jeep liberty and like i said getting it run running right this time because it has been a little neglected of course so we're gonna do that so stay tuned all right here we go look at how clean that actually came out pretty dang clean i already took off the air filter and everything it's not too bad got some auto lights here but it's not too bad as you can see I don't know if you could tell on camera but yeah not too shabby still doable um, I just bought some copper auto lights some decently cheap ones uh, look at the job done for sure took off the intake top and tube cover to the intake box and uh, that'll give me access right here to these spark plugs on that side and then this side's already free the only hard one will be the third one back underneath this reservoir that one right back there so that's what this video is going to be up about today, and then uh, I'll be starting it and seeing if any changes has occurred with this engine. If it still vibrates pretty hard, or if it actually smoothed things out a little bit, because as you could see, the spark plug is a little bit dirty. It's not completely worn out, but it is a little bit dirty. Let me see if I can focus it a little bit better. Using one hand here. There you go. It's a bit dirty. It isn't terrible though. It's still got some in there. But hey, as long as I get some new ones, these ones were auto lights also. Probably not the best spark plug, I know that. Not the best. I wanted to run some NGKs or something, but not terrible. All right, so let me get to I think I, actually, I think I'll try to do this side first because this is going to be the harder side. This side's going to be a lot easier to do, wide open. So let me see if I can set this camera up and get it taken care of on a good view, so you that so that you guys will be able to see. But look at those tow hooks came out fine and dandy. Not too shabby. Let's see, it's a bit dark. Came out quite nice. Alright. Let me get these plugs unplugged here. Uh, they feel like they haven't been unplugged in so long. They're stiff as a rock. Let me get Here we go. It's the first one. Let's see if I can get the second one off. There goes the second one. I think the third one I could do by hand. There we go. Good set of pliers. Gets the job done. All right. Um, out of the way. It's just your antifreeze overflow line. This one I already unbolted. Not too bad. Not terrible at least. Uh, yeah, so now I gotta get to the second one. May not have to remove that vacuum. We shall see. Let's see there. I think it's a 10 mil. 
I'm going to use a deep though. Yep. That was it. And we just got to be careful taking it off. Be really careful taking it off so I don't drop that nut in here and lose that forever. All right. There's the third one. Not looking too bad. Quite good, actually. I'd say so. Not bad. Okay, not bad at all. Just a bit dirty. All right, now it's time to get these spark plugs out. All right, you get the first, or the first one's already out. I just showed you guys that one. I'm gonna go in and try to get that second one out, see if we actually can. With all right, there's the spark plug on the second one right there. It's not bad, honestly. It is used, of course. I think these were like two years old, honestly. So, not bad though, not bad. About the same as the very first one. About the same, pretty much the same, I would say. Yeah, about the same. Oh, that one is covered in oil, I think. Could be oil, I'm not exactly sure, but that's what it looks like. Looks like it's covered in some oil, yeah. Look at that residue right there. That is outside the cylinder, though. Yeah, that's actually, I think, that's water, okay. So there is water on top of that cylinder from whenever I cleaned this engine bay, so this is not oil. No, it's not even, a, it's not even oily. This is all water, so water just kicked up inside of that port where the spark plug was and um, pulled it up with a little bit of water. Back of it isn't bad, not even a little bit rusty, so. And again, not, not the worst, but can use a change, that's for sure. Not bad, though, I'd say. Okay, now on to the next side, on the other side. All right, I'm gonna unplug these. Hopefully these guys ain't too dang hard to unplug. Oh, much easier on this side, much easier. That's my PCV line right here. This tube is a bit nasty. I don't know if you can see that, but it is. Gonna have some oil. I may need a new PCV, PCV valve on this side. I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to take it off and do a pressure check on it. See exactly if that's good or not because that is like, I don't know. It's a little bit loose almost. But I think it'll be okay. Let's see the second one. Just push this one's actually a little hard because the position it's in. There we go. Got that off. All right. I'm going to try the big, thick, husky flathead. See if I can put it down in here, push that button, and grip it out. There we go. All right, the plug is free. Get you guys in here. I don't know if you can see, but that is a free plug right there. It's the very last one. That's the one that's the most pain in the ass. All right, that one actually fell on the floor. I heard it touch the concrete though, so that's a good. That's a good sign. <laughs> Got it. Got the second. All right. Got it back. Got these coil packs off. Oh, that hurt. Yeah. 
good also. Just a bit dirty. I mean, obviously it doesn't matter if they're fill only inside, if they're super filthy, which it's not. It's pretty clean. It's going to be dirty on the outside, you know. It's, that's just how it's going to be. It sits outside the engine. Uh, this one is watery, again. Same as the last one. This one actually has grass inside of it. <laughs> yeah, not terrible, though. Not terrible. Not terrible. I'm going to give it a quick wipe down, though, before I put them in. Rings or what? But Or, um... The spark plug, not the coil pack. This one's actually pretty clean. Okay, now let's check the spark plug. The spark plug back here, I think this is, I can't remember the extension, so let me pull it out. I think that did it. Alright. There it is. See, this one I remember having oil on it last time. But there is no oil on it whatsoever. That is an excellent sign. That is an excellent sign, I'd say. It's obviously dirty. It's from the water and such that was sitting inside of that. Behind it. Just packed up around it. But other than that, it is pretty clean, I'd say. Pretty clean. Not bad. Not bad. All right, there we go. This one is pretty damn dirty. I don't know if the camera does it justice, but that is a nasty spark plug. <laughs> that is a nasty spark plug. Not bad, though. Uh, same deal, just water. As soon as I pulled the spark plug out, the water behind it drained down the threads and made it look all oily, but that is just water all over these threads. It's not oily whatsoever, it's just rustyish water. So, check the quality of that one also. Same deal as always, just some water behind it, not oily whatsoever. Same exact usage. As you can see, it's wet all along here. Must have been puddled up with water quite for some time. So these, like I said, are going to be the new ones. So let me get these all opened and Let's put these bad boys inside of the Liberty and get it running nice. All right, there's the brand new fresh spark plug. I think I will have to gap this. I think I just may have to. So, no big deal. I got a gapper. I know the specs. Let's do it. All right, I actually just ran it. Didn't need a gap. It's actually pretty much perfect. So, it's in right now. All right, I just got it in just now. It it was a little hard, it was kind of a pain, but once I dropped it in there and was able to get the extensions behind it, I was able to tighten it in and then use the ratchet the rest of the way. So this one is all the way seated. It's good to go. Just gotta put the coil pack back in. I think what I did last time was I actually plugged it in and it was halfway down. There we go. I think that's it. Let's hope I don't drop this nut once more. Looks like it's going in. Yep, it's in. All right, let's get her on tightened. All done. I don't know if you heard that, but that was my socket. 10 millimeter socket deep, it's been retrieved. All right, now, that one is plugged in, that one is tightened down and ready to go as softly as possible. There we go, hopefully it doesn't give me crap. 
because I would not like that. It's the last thing I want because I have to go to the junkyard in a little bit. And uh, they close around 4 and right now it's going to be 1 o'clock. So I want to make sure I can get this job done quick and efficiently. Continue on more important things that I need to do. I don't know if you guys noticed. Uh, Alright, yeah, it's tight. But I don't know if you guys noticed this TCM right here was replaced. I actually bought a new one because the transmission was jerking really bad and I did everything except change the tra <coughs> I'm sorry, the transmission, the solenoid and uh, I wanted to just, just go with this first. I didn't have to do any resetting or anything. I bought it from the same year, same Jeep Liberty KJ02 V6, you know, same everything, same engine and uh, I plugged it and plug and play it was quick it was easy and it solved the jerking problem completely gone that actually fixed it i don't know if it ever came back on the last owner or not but so far i haven't driven it yet so i, I cannot test it all i've done was reverse and then back up and then pull forward to make sure the transfer case and everything was good to go and two-wheel drive and all that and uh but yeah that has been replaced. That is not original. That was actually from a junkyard somewhere else in this United States of America we call home. Let's get the second one put in. Oh wait, I just tightened it, that's right. So let's get her torqued on down. Good old craftsman. I don't know if you guys know, but I appreciate tools a lot. I pay attention to them. Build quality and everything. Gotta have a good tool. You can't, can't go off of junk. Even though I do have a lot of Walmart sockets and stuff, those guys, HyperTuff, stepped their game up. They actually do got some decently good tools. I will give them that. I Every time I go to buy a socket and I'm on the run quick, I'll go straight to Walmart and pick up their sockets because they are good. Very good sockets. This one is nice and solid also. All right. Socket. All right, second one is in. Now let me throw the, let me wipe this off real quick because this is pretty dirty. All right, I just dropped the coil pack inside. Now I'm plugging it in. All right, it's all in. Now let's power tools for everything. Power tools for everything, especially you don't want to strip anything out. That would be terrible. If you do have to end up using a ratchet, I recommend using it with very very light force because that would be terrible if it were to cross thread. Okay, that one's in there nice and good. Side is all did and done. It's good down there. It's good right there. Boom, boom, and I don't know if you can see that one back here, but Boom, that one is done too. Gonna work on work on over to this side. To make this video a little bit quicker, I'm gonna be I'm gonna fast forward in one second. I'm gonna be at the last one. You guys are gonna see that. And it'll take probably, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes for me. Alright, see you then. Alright, on the last one. Getting it tightened down. Okay, nice and tight. Abs that hold the overflow line. It actually runs from here all the way up and around all the way to the overflow. But all right, yeah, as you can see, there is clips, little uh, pins on here, and you have to, those hold these this line holds it up on top of the coil packs. I guess so they're just not rubbing because this line does get hot. So that is done. Spark plugs are done. So now I'm going to put the filter that's somewhat a little bit dirty back in. It's not bad actually. It's really not bad. Put that right on back in there. The tabs. Stick those tabs and those holes in the back. Stick them right on in there until they're fully fleshly mounted. And then just knock it down and tidy her up. 
Boom. There. So now let me just grab the 10 millimeter. Here on up. This thing all buttoned up. Solid as can be. Nice and good. You know, I shouldn't even be using this tool to tighten this thing on down, but it's good. All right, make sure everything's tidied up. All the plugs have been plugged in. Everything is tidy. Everything is good. All back there. Everything looks to be all in. Okay, I'm going to hand the camera off to my camera girl. Was a little rough on the start. I didn't hold the ignition, and then it was like boom, 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 and then it caught up. So it is running nice, nice and smooth though, really smooth. But then again, it is at like 11, 12, 1300 RPMs. It's going to feel that way. Yeah, just over 1300 RPMs. All right, down to two, down to, up to three, almost 1,400 RPMs. It sounds like it's kind of went in the spit and sputter, but then again, it is cold, and there is an exhaust leak down here that I have to go over. It does seem to be running a bit better now. It's like something's burning. Can't tell exactly. Yeah, it smells like a like rubber or something. All right, so after I got everything all tidied up and I thought it was all good, <laughs> I started it up. It had slightly high idle. You guys heard that. I even said that. And it wasn't because it was cold. It was because there's a line right here that I guess whenever I pulled the plug up and out of the cylinder, I must have taken it right off. It was a PCV hose that runs from the it runs from the spot where the fill where you fill the oil at. Right here, that tube runs under the manifold or on top of the manifold, under the box, air box, right there, and then works its way around to back here. Right there. And that hose is completely unplugged, and I knew I heard sucking sound like like a vacuum or something and I just couldn't figure it out and then I looked and I said sure enough I see that hose and I plugged it up and it, the car died and I started back up and it went right down to 600 rpms and idling smooth looks so small on camera I don't understand why but it's a good Liberty. I really love this thing. It is a very good Liberty. I really like it. Phew, God bless me. But yeah, it is a very good Liberty. Um, but I do want a Grand Cherokee. That That is my next, that is my next goal. Um, this income tax, I am going to be buying, I'm gonna be selling the Liberty, getting the Grand Cherokee and this income tax, I am going to be buying front bumper, rear bumper, tire carrier, tires, and wheels for the Grand Cherokee. And I'm going to save up bit by bit and then build up the... This is for the Grand Cherokee I'm getting. And I'm going to be saving up little by little and buying the lift kit. You know, upper control arms, lower control arms for the front, upper control arm and lower control arms for the rear because it is three link on the Grand Cherokee. It is also three link in the rear just like the Grand, just like the Jeep Liberty. It's got the triangle up top and then two control arms on the bottom. 
they do sell a kit, probably even for this one, but they sell a kit for the Grand Cherokee that it bolts onto the top of the diff in the rear and it makes it to where you can run two separate control arms coming from the top down to the top of the diff. And then of course, the two singles on the bottom of the rear diff, the two lower control arms. So the rear ends of these two vehicles are set up just the same though, just the same. It's crazy. The only difference is this has independent, which this I honestly think is the next best thing after a Jeep Grand Cherokee or a Jeep XJ. The Liberty KJ, these years, 02 to 04, the video actually cut out. I ran out of space, so I had to redo all this. Um, what I was saying, I think, I believe what I was saying was the 02 to 07 Jeep Liberty KJ is the next best thing from a Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ and a Jeep Cherokee XJ. This, I think, is the next best thing. After this, um, well, there's actually other ones. People will argue there's the Commander. There's the, there is still the second gen Liberty. Um, which I've seen built pretty nice also, but the KJ is my ultimate favorite because it's, it's, it's small, it's compact, it's small, it's, it's, it's a wonderful truck. It really is. Still has the manual shift linkage, four wheel drive. It's nice. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's the next best thing from a WJ to an XJ. So that's pretty much what I'm trying to get to. Um, after those, this would be the one I would buy if it wasn't for those two. Uh, but I do want to switch all my effort down to a WJ and get that WJ that I want and lift it up. And my goal is to go five inches of lift also with 37 inch tires. That's what I want. 37 inch tires on a five inch lift on a WJ Grand Cherokee, Jeep Grand Cherokee. Now, of course, I'm going to be uh, cutting the fenders. I'm going to have to do slight trimmings to all the fenders and cut them all up to run these 37s, but that's the whole fun about it. It's going to look very good. I've already got a bumper picked out that I want to get, a rear bumper. The tire carriers are the bad thing. Another good thing about the Jeep Liberty is it comes with the tire carrier behind it, and you can run all the way up to a 295-75-16. There's literally, I would say, half of an inch to the bumper that it actually, let me just show you guys. There's a half, there's actually a half of an inch in there. You can't see from right here, but there's, I don't know if you could see that, but there's a half of a thing, half of an inch about right there to the bumper. Actually, no, because the point of the bumper, it's actually less than that, probably three eighths quarter of an inch maybe so yeah 295 is the biggest you can run on here without a wheel spacer i do have the adapter that brings the spare tire up and out more that's in storage i haven't got that i didn't need to put that on here so i left it off but that's the 295 right there without any spacers whatsoever plus i do have i think four inch back spacing on the wheel so that does help of course but again one of my favorite vehicles in the world jeep liberty kj i'll always love these vehicles Pretty badass, if you ask me. I do love these vehicles, but my next vehicle will be this. I'm just kidding. It will be this. Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ. So small stock. So small. I think the Liberty had more lift than that Grand Cherokee did stock. This was the Desert Package model, it said. It had all the scrape plates on it. Or I don't remember if it's a desert package or blah, blah, blah. It could have, it could have not been. I heard it, it was this for this model because it came with the scrape plates, front and rear, you know, uh, oil pan, transfer case, scrape plate. Uh, I think most four-wheel drives come with the gas tank scrape plate, uh, or as everybody likes to call them. Uh, not scrape plate, but skid plates, whatever, same difference. But yeah, the Liberty is running good once more, and I'm happy about that. Hey guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was just a quick, and easy, and small video showing you guys how to change the spark plugs and just doing it along with me because that's what matters, right? I'm not doing it mainly for the content. 
of Jeep Liberty. We're doing it to check out our rigs and see just how fun and how cool they actually are coming out to be. Liberty, like I said before, I love it. It's a good, it's a very good Jeep. It is a very good Jeep. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always. And another thing is, I think I'm gonna have this Jeep for quite a while, I'm not sure exactly. But yeah, this is Fun Automotive. And again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Goodbye.